Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to build a dashboard in Python using Plotly and Dash, where the user will be able to choose a value from the dropdown and update the Corpleth map. Then the user can also click on one of the zip codes and it will create another uh, scatter map that uh, shows all the buildings within that zip code as uh, scatter plots. And they can actually zoom in, we can change the map type, uh, but most importantly, this is data that comes from the New York City Open Data Portal on, uh, on New York City buildings, water usage, energy score, the year the building was built, there are many, many columns. Uh, in this case, we're analyzing uh, three different or visualizing three different values, either the energy star score uh, average per zip code or the average year built of buildings or the indoor wa water usage. So let's look at the year build. We can see here that the average year built for buildings in zip code 10031 is 1926. We can dive into it a little bit more by clicking on this and then we'll see here all the buildings or most of the buildings within this zip code 1920 1940 1908 there's some buildings from 18 something 1827 and so on and so on so we're going to see how to do this today with this code right here i'm going to explain this to you and if you have any questions you can ask me on linkedin or the youtube channel under the video um, but I also recommend you join us at Charming Data. This is a free open uh, community where we work on projects together. This is the 2025 projects for January and February. Uh, you can click on this. Uh, I'll send you the link right here so you can see this. You can click on the GitHub uh, repo and you can see all the different ideas that the community put together uh, for creating this dashboard and then integrating some large language models and AI into this or similar dashboards we have events every saturday we meet and talk about this and most importantly we support each other along the way as we learn python and llm and ais so come join us all right so let's look into the code let's create this dashboard right here so the first thing i'm importing all the libraries that are necessary also you'll need to install dash if you don't have dash and um, uh, pandas and then we're going to um, download. I already did this, but you will need to do this at home. Go to this link right here and download the GeoJSON file. This will give us the um, uh, uh, shape and uh, size. So click here, choose map format, GeoJSON, and then you'll get you'll be able to get the, um, the this this file right here download it, put it inside the same the directory where this file is, this Python file. And this is our GeoJSON for the zip codes, for the New York City zip codes. And you can map on a Coropleth map. So we have our GeoJSON, and then we have our regular data set right here. It's about 180 megabytes. We just download everything by exporting on the top right. We have our data set, and it's called, this number will change, just make sure you, you update this link right here. And then we are going to change the postal codes to strings instead of numbers. This is a postal code um, column inside the data set, somewhere here in one of the one of the one of the columns. I can't remember. And that's it. And then we're going to create a function that would allow us to create a Corpleth map. I'm going to create this function because I'm going to create the Corpleth map three different times. I'm going to repeat this based on what dropdown was chosen, what dropdown value. So instead of writing all this code three, four, or five different times, I'll just I'll create it here. And the only things that change is the data frame, the color, the range color, and the labels. So this is the only thing that I'm going to update when I activate this, execute this function. Right? And all the rest are going is going to repeat the cell. These are always the same. Okay, we'll go back to this in a second. So we're, let's create our layout, app.layout on, on line 40. We have our dropdown right here, where we have the initial values energy score. So if I refresh the app, you'll see the initial value. It's not years built, it's energy score is the initial value. And then we have three different options because I want to give the user these strings to, to visualize. 
either energy score or in water, indoor water usage or years built. And then I have an empty graph. Here's where I'm going to insert the figure, the choropleth map. And then this is actually not necessary. I use this just for um, just for this callback. But nowadays, you don't even need an output. You can probably just erase this. You don't necessarily need this right now. OK, so our first callback is the callback right here from line 50 to line 68, where we take it. it, it it creates the interaction or the interactivity between the callback value chosen and updating the corpus map. In essence, what we're doing here is we're taking the value of the dropdown. This measurement is the ID of the dropdown, you see here. So we're taking the value of the dropdown, which initially is energy score. We'll call it measurement chosen. So it could be energy score, it can be years built, it could be indoor water. And then we're going to uh, update the measurement uh, chosen, update this, the column, either years built column or energy star score or indoor. These are columns of the data frame, of this data frame right here. We're going to update the column uh, to numeric and then uh, remove all, uh, uh, disregard the errors. And then we're going to group by the postal code uh, and, and, and this column. Now, why are we grouping by? Because we have a lot of buildings, let's say, in this zip code, well, 123. You see, there's a lot of buildings here, probably hundreds of dozens and hundreds of buildings. So instead of uh, what I want to see here is the average of whatever value I've chosen, the average energy score within that zip code for all the buildings, the average year built of all the buildings. Uh, they were built in this zip code. So that's what we're doing group by. And that's it. And then we say, if the measurement chosen in the value, right, the value of the dropdown is equal to energy score, then create the corpus map. Pretty much execute this uh, function right here, which is just a corpus map. Now, all of this is going to repeat because all of this is, stays the same. This GeoJSON is the zip codes that we need or the polygons that we need to, to draw the zip codes. Only these change. Um, even the data frame doesn't really change. These four. So we'll go here. We'll see the data frame is going to be the, the filter data frame. It's always the filtered one. Uh, the color is going to be the, the column of the measurement, of the, the column of the, you know, the, the drop down chosen. So either energy star or water usage or years built is the color. And the range color, I just changed it to, to be, um, let's say, um, a smaller range. If I use, if I look at Energy Star, uh, the technically is from like zero to a hundred, but very, very few you know, average zip codes or average Energy Star is below like twenty or below twenty-five, and very few are above eighty-five or ninety. So I just set the color bar from thirty-five to seventy-five, so it's easier to distinguish the difference between zip codes, right? If you left it the same or um, the default 0 to 100, everything will look kind of like uh, orangey, and it will be hard to tell the difference. And then I'm just changing the label. I want to call, instead of energy star score, I want to call it energy score. You see right here, energy score. And when we do the indoor water usage, instead of, let's look at the labels, indoor water use. Instead of saying indoor water usage, all water source, because this is the name of the column. Instead of that, I'm just going to say indoor water use in the color bar. Here again, I'm changing the range color from 2000 to 8000. You see? Because I think that the highest, what, there's this zip code, I think right here, look, it's like indoor water use, 68000. This is an outlier. So if I, did, if I left the default color bar, everything will look yellow. Everything would look like compared to 68000. But most things are between 1,000 to like 7,000. So that's why I changed the range of the, of the color bar. And same thing here. The color bar is on 1925, for years built. And we don't need any labels. We'll just call it years built is fine to call it years built. Um, I just update the filter, the, the column of years built to, to integer, because I think it's a, it's a float. The average is a float, and I don't want the average to be a float. I want it to be an integer. And that's it. And then I return the figure to the figure property of the map.
And that's how we see this now. Finally, how do I do this? The second callback is what I use to click on a zip code, and then I get all the buildings in that zip code. And it's easier than you think. Really, what we're doing is we're going to take the click data property of the zip map. This is the, the ID of the DCC graph, which is which is actually this, this figure, right, the uh, choropleth. We're going to take the uh, click data. And we're going to say, if the data is clicked, if there's something there, if it's not none, then extract the zip code from the data. So if you, if you just print right after this line of code, you print click data, you'll see a dictionary with a bunch of different properties. So I'm going to go into the points key of the dictionary, into the first part of the list, which is a lot of separate dictionaries, and then I'm going to the location. Location is the actual zip code of whatever we click on, this one or this one. So now that I have the zip code, I can filter the data frame, the main data frame, to only have rows with that zip code. Take the zip, postal zip code column, and only that zip code will exist in my data frame. And then I create the scatter map. I have my data frame, I have my latitude, my longitude. These are all columns inside the data frame of every, every row. Every building has a latitude and longitude. It has, and I want to show the year built. You can see here, I hover, you can see 1965, 1930, 1920. Zoom in a little bit. 1896, oh my God, these are very old buildings. 1877, 1873, oh Lord. Um, and then zoom 11 and height 400. And then I return, in this case, I'm returning a DCC graph to the children of the filler. Oh, okay, I'm returning the DCC graph here to the HTML div. So instead of having a DCC graph, this is another way to, to visualize graphs. I'll just return everything into an empty, an empty div. There you go. All right. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you still have questions, just join the Charming Data community and you can ask me using the chat function, direct messages, or just ask the whole team. Like we're all community members are here to help each other. Go to Project Chats and we will help each other learn Dash, learn AIs and large language models that we'll do later in, in subsequent weeks. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to sign up the, uh, <laughs> to the YouTube channel. <laughs> they always say smash the, the uh, subscribe button. And um, also uh, join Charming Data. And always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.